Hey, I'm touring. I'm going to be in Perth next week. January 19 is the first show, and then I'm performing every single night except for Mondays and Sundays until the 28th of January. After that, I do Melbourne from the 9th of April until the uh, 21st of April uh, every night except for Mondays. And then I'm in Sydney on the 10th of May and the 11th. Uh, And then I'm in Adelaide at some point. I think Adelaide is almost sold out. Friday, I mean Perth. The first, I'm just saying days. Thursday, uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, Perth, uh, the, f- the first weekend has almost sold out. So Friday has almost sold out. Um, so get your tickets now. And uh, I can't wait, man. I'm going to be vlogging every day in Perth while I'm there so you can watch me uh, figure out the show and, and have a lot of fun. And uh, I want to see you there. Grab your tickets now. It's a small venue. I know it looks like a lot of shows, but it'll fill up really quick. So Perth, I'm going to see you next week. I can't wait. Someone said in the comment section of episode 317 that they hate it when I yell during the intro. Oh, so I saw that. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 318 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Oh, sorry, it's 319. You said before it was 319. Damn. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 319 <laughs> of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. So I had to do it again because I got it wrong. Um <laughs> I've been, uh, I know, I know that I talk about my sleep a lot because it's been so atrocious and then it got better. It's gotten really bad recently. Uh, the last few nights, it's gotten absolutely horrific. I uh, have, uh, I haven't been sleeping through the night. It's been really, really bad. And I woke up last night and, uh, I heard these noises just around me that disturbed me. Uh, from outside the house. I go outside the house. I can't see anything. I can't figure out what's happening. And then I go back in the house. I put my ear to the floor. I could hear Yiddish. And I ended up pulling up the floorboards. Turns out there's a whole synagogue underneath my house. I said, who the fuck are you guys? And they said, oh, sorry, is this New York? Turns out... The bloody Jews are digging underneath their synagogue, trying to go next door. They ended up going halfway to China. They made it to Australia. <laughs> They're underneath my house. There's Jews in my walls. If you don't know what I'm referencing, all right, I'm, I'm about to say, like, what, <laughs> if you don't know the context, would sound like the most anti-Semitic shit you've ever heard in your life. Like, when I first saw the headline, I was like, whoa, what racist right-wing news source am I following? <laughs> And then it was the New York Times. <laughs> like, you, if you take New York Times off this, you'd think that this headline would be from Daily Stormer. All right? Jews in New York dug tunnel underneath the city in secret. <laughs> this is real. All right? This, this, I don't know what it is. It's like a, a, a very heavily religious type of Hasidic Jew. So it's even more Jewish than Hasidic Jews. And I don't probably understand this because I'm not from New York. So I'm going to get some things wrong about the cultural practices. But a bunch of super mega... <laughs> like, imagine a Hasidic Jew on um, on kosher steroids. That's what these guys are. Super mega double Jews. They were digging tunnels underneath apartment buildings seemingly to connect their synagogue or shul to another (laughs) significant Jewish building or something. It's so, there's so few, so little information out there about this because it seems like none of these Jewish people are talking to the media, right? And every single person reporting about this is tiptoeing because again, when you read... Jews tunneling underneath the city, Jews in the sewer. You think, what the fuck is this anti-Semitic shit? You know, oh, all of a sudden there's a there's a fucking conflict in Gaza, and now we're saying that Jews live in the sewers. Well, some of them, I wouldn't say live there, but they're hanging out doing something. <laughs> some, like under twenty. <laughs> I'm not generalizing. If anything, I'm minimizing for my own safety. They're tunneling <laughs> underneath the bum. What are they doing? You know what? That sounds. That honestly sounds like to me when a bunch of fellas spend a bit too much time together, <laughs> and and you know that because here's the thing about these Hasidic Jews: they don't fucking talk to anyone. They're like the Amish. They don't. They got tight lips. All right. 
That's something that you only get like as a community from going through something as horrific as the Holocaust is everyone knows how to shut their fucking mouth, right? So I just want you to picture, just imagine, right? If you think these Jews are crazy, just imagine if you and 200 fellas, all right, were all wearing the same outfit <laughs> and you have been for years, generations even, You've been hanging out in the same spot. All of a sudden, your community is a little bit too big for your clubhouse. And then you remember that the other section of your clubhouse is just one apartment building away and you all have a shovel. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that no one is snitching. I'm not telling the police anything. They killed my grandfather and his parents. No way. I don't trust authority. It's in my blood. I'm wearing the same outfit as you, my brother. <laughs> Let's dig. I'm digging the tunnel. Why are they digging tunnels underneath the city? You know what's funny? I can't, and we don't know this, or at least it hasn't been released or I haven't seen it. We have no idea how long, <laughs> how long they've been digging the tunnels. So... The police ended up going into this place because a bunch of people had reported hearing Jews underneath their house. <laughs> There's a guy on Twitter that tweeted out months ago, I hear Yiddish in my apartment. I live on the ground floor. And everyone's like, oh, you fucking, you're schizophrenic. You're crazy. And in everyone else's defense, if my mate was like, dude, I swear at night I hear Yiddish. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, firstly, how do you know what Yiddish even sounds like? <laughs> you know? Like, if I was walking down the street and two Jews walk past and I said to my mate, oh, they're talking Yiddish, you'd be like, how do you know what Yiddish sounds like? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he's come back today going, I fucking told you. That's the biggest I told you moment of all time. I told you there were Jews under my floorboards. <laughs> it's not the first time that Jews have desperately tried to not be caught under some floorboards, you know? So they're, they're incredible secret keeping people. Of course, they've had to be. But it's so funny just watching everyone be, I've never in my life seen the media exercise more caution when it comes to the truth and speculations than with this story. The media was less careful with why we should invade Iraq. <laughs> oh, they, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they hate our freedom. <laughs> oh, maybe 9-11? <laughs> and then everyone was like, yeah, let's go. But now we've got Jews digging tunnels underneath New York and people are like... Well, we don't want to jump to any conclusions. And I'm not jumping to conclusions either. I'm sure I'm sure that it was just like a bunch of fellas who were too sweaty in their shawl and they were like, this sucks. Can we get a breeze in this bitch? <laughs> I just hope they didn't do any digging on Sabbath. You know, it's... I feel very sorry for the Jewish community because... Especially now, the last thing you guys needed was video of a Jew climbing out of a sewer <laughs> yeah. in the full get up and the sideburns. You know, it's just, it's like, it's the most anti-Semitic thing I could even imagine saying <laughs> that I'm watching a video of it. Oh, Jews live in the sewer. And now I'm watching a video of a Jew come out of the sewer go, get out of my tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... That's the last thing you guys needed. If anyone listening to this, if your surname ends with wits, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel for you in this time. This is worse than what's happening in Israel, Palestine for you guys. This Jews digging tunnels underneath the city. That's the last thing you guys needed. Andrew Tate's going, oh, what are they trafficking? Well, I don't know if you get much trafficking done in a little fucking... Tunnel. It looks well made. It looks like they spent a lot of time on it. Fuck. You know, it's actually so good that someone figured out that this was happening. Could you imagine if just an apartment building sunk? <laughs> like, that'd be even worse for optics. Oh, the Jews are trying to sink apartment buildings. 
It's not good. <laughs> they were only found because city workers were trying to replace the pipes, weren't they? I don't know. I like think- every news article I've found has just said, uh, Jews in tunnels, we don't know why. The rabbi, or I don't know if it was a rabbi, but the guy in charge of that particular group of of religious Jews, even he's been like, they were young religious extremists. Yeah. Like, even, so even he's like, I don't know what the fuck these Jews are doing in the tunnel. <laughs> you know what it is? It's like, you know what's happening now? It's like uh, that scene in the Batman movie where they send the cops into the tunnels and into every fucking train subway line to try and find Bane or whatever happened. I could barely remember what happened in that movie. But I don't think any Jews were coming out of Suez because they'd be like, uh, Christopher Nolan, you're a visionary, but there's no way we're putting a Jew in a sewer, all right? It's not a good look. Meanwhile, underneath the production, someone someone's speaking Yiddish. <laughs> How long have they been under there? Because I've seen video of like cops going into the tunnel like with GoPros and shit. It looks, it's not nice, but it looks really well made. Like stru- they've got walls. It does, it's not very really clean, but it's a tunnel underneath New York. God, that's phenomenal. I need to... Yeah, how did... They, can you please Google how did they find... <laughs> how did they... <laughs> I'm just laughing. It's just... It's so crazy. And yeah, just the last thing they needed. Like, I'm, uh, I'm seeing video on Twitter of just the, the where they found the tunnel, like the tunnel area outside. There's just fucking media everywhere. There's even just like bystanders filming on their phones. Just, uh, it, it's it, they're all standing around like sewer grates and shit. Like it's a fucking game of whack-a-mole. Just hoping that some rabbi crawls out or something. It's fucking crazy. I think that, uh, and you know, Andrew Tate's, you know, oh, it was child trafficking. I reckon it's just a bunch of boys digging a hole. Like, I feel like every man has that urge in them to just fucking dig a tunnel one day, you know? Why do you think Minecraft is the biggest game of all time? See, if Mojang set up like a land setup down there, this never would have happened, you know? They could have just, any any of these like young Jewish men who really felt the urge to tunnel, put them on Minecraft. Is that kosher? There's pigs, probably not. I can't actually find anything about... I'm telling you, they're not... I've never seen the media be this cautious ever. You Google anything about it and it's it's just like, uh, Jews in tunnels, we don't know why, and this is what the leader said. But from... I read an article yesterday and it was saying that there were reports from residents about this and then the city was trying to replace water pipes and a construction crew found the tunnels by mistake. Wow. And then when they've tried to, like, obviously for the safety, the property manager's like, okay, let's fill this with concrete. That's when a big brawl started between the police and... Yeah, that's right. They wanted to fill it with concrete and then and then it looked like a, almost a giant... Like, I'm seeing fucking Jewish guys in the full get up getting maced by the cops. And I'm like, well, that's the last thing that the NYPD needs to... You know, this whole thing, these videos are just not good for anyone. No police officer wants to be the guy in a shul macing Jews. Yeah. You don't want that to be on your fucking resume, you know? <laughs> no Jew wants to see a video of a guy in the getup climbing out of a sewer. It's not good. You know, this is like uh, that photo of the Pope blessing Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. It's like, oh, why did we have that? You know, Catholics don't want to see that. That brings up some collective trauma oh we don't want to think about that um you know what i think is really funny is obviously i'm seeing i'm seeing a lot of residents go i fucking knew it yeah. which means that it would ha- it would have to be for months like dozens of people have been calling up whoever you're supposed to call i don't know if you if you're hearing Jews underneath your house, who do you call? There's, <laughs> there's not a number for that, you know. Jews underneath my house hotline. You, you can't. You you don't call emergency services. 
you call the council maybe? <laughs> like I'm just thinking if I if I had Koreans in my walls, <laughs> who the fuck do I call? I would call uh I'd call a builder first. You know, you would, if I'm hearing Koreans in my walls, I'd call a carpenter to cut a piece of the plaster off and just have and we'd have a listen. <laughs> We go, oh, we don't hear any Koreans. They're, they're not in the walls. And then at 3 a.m. I'd wake up to, <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon they were loud? Or do you reckon they were quiet? I reckon, it, let's say, because the tunnels, they look so well built. Can you treat, please try and find out how long they've been there? Because from the video I've seen, they've got plaster walls up. They've got, it's dirty. Like there's shit everywhere. It looks like they've been in there for a while. It's dusty. You know, it's got to be at least six months, maybe even longer, right? So for six months... 60 feet long, which is 18.3 meters long. Wow. And it, you know what? No machinery either, right? Because there's no way you... <laughs> there's no way you're getting an excavator down the stairs into your shawl. They did it by hand like it was fucking Shawshank Redemption. I was reading an article, sorry. That's so good. Because here's the thing, right? If I'm hearing Koreans in my walls, I call the carpenter. We cut a section of the wall off, maybe in multiple parts of my house. I don't hear anything. Then at night, I'd wake up and hear... I reckon for like the maybe the first month, right? Obviously, when you're digging the tunnel, you're going to be really quiet. Like no picks. You're mostly scraping in the middle of the night. Or maybe you would do it during the day because at night, it's quieter outside the tunnel everyone's in their bed you do it during the day if you're going underneath an apartment building i think you do it during the day a lot of scraping you know not too much not too many hammers no excavators right and then it'd take you fuck man surely it takes months what did they do with the dirt this raises so many questions like were they were they bringing the dirt out in their kippers like what's going on or they're big they wear those big top hat things I'm sorry, this is going to be very culturally insensitive. We don't really have many of these uh, types of Hasidic Jews where I live, all right? I saw them everywhere in New York. I thought they were fascinating. What's this? The alleged rogue members of the movement advanced by the late Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. That's the most Jewish name I've ever heard. Menachem Mendel Schneerson had reportedly been digging the tunnel under the 100-year-old synagogue for a year. <laughs> a year. I mean, I, that's, I told you. I mean, it would take months alone to get the dirt out in a way that's not... So, fuck, they can keep a secret, can't they? Because you know what? Not only did the no one outside of the shul find out for a year, it also seems like the rabbi and a bunch of other people within the church had no idea this was happening. The underground pathway was not discovered until last month when neighbors reported suspicious noises coming from beneath their homes. <laughs> That's what I mean. And who, do you, who was it reported to? Obviously, that one guy tweeted it out, and that just looks fucking insane and really anti-Semitic, right? There's Jews underneath my apartment building. I'm hearing Yiddish. All right, take your medicine. Right? I'd call the carpenter over, get him to check my walls. If I wake up at 3 a.m., I'm still hear hearing Korean underneath my floorboards. I'd go insane. Because this is like when I was... If you listen to a few podcasts ago, it went viral on TikTok, this clip, when I was hearing my name. I thought I was hallucinating for months because I would hear, Louis, Louis. Anyway... About a month later, I thought Jazz was calling me and then I thought it was ghost. I was on new medicine. I thought it was hallucinating. It was my neighbor. Their dog's called Louie. I reckon it'd be exactly the same. Dude, I know this sounds crazy, but for months I have been hearing Korean in my floorboards. <laughs> what the fuck? So then I would call the council, I guess, and I would go, hey, uh... This is going to sound crazy, but I'm hearing Korean underneath my house. And they go, uh, all right, we'll look into that. And then they wouldn't even write it down, you know? A year they were digging the tunnel. That's, I mean, I think we can all learn from that. And, and that's the power of not snitching. They dug a tunnel by hand. 
from one building to another and completed it and plastered it. And the only thing that really fucked them was soundproofing. So lesson learned, guys. Next time you build a tunnel from a synagogue to another or a mosque to another, make sure to bring insulating foam that's very good with soundproofing. No asbestos. Fuck, that's... I think that's... Got it. That has to be the funniest news story of the year, and we're in January. <clears throat> and you know, just describe just describing what happened in real life feels super anti-Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> so I might stop there before I get cancelled. Um. <clears throat> anyway. Uh. Oh, more shit. That's wild. Uh, Gypsy Rose. This stuff with Gypsy Rose is crazy. If you guys don't know about this Gypsy Rose woman, um, this goes back to, for me and you, Keelan, when we were staying in Tasmania with Rosie, uh, this uh, HBO TV show, not a documentary, but based on true events. And like, what what do they call those? A fucking dramatized mini TV. series, like Chernobyl, yeah. right? Not acted out you know in that scene you know with documentaries where they act out julius caesar getting murdered and it's cheap costumes uh and it goes for 40 seconds and you know they keep repeating the actors to play different characters throughout the documentary <laughs> imagine that but they took out the documentary and they and they and they upped the budget of that scene and that was the then they made it a whole episode it was that what was the show called the act the act that's right so <clears throat> gypsy rose and it's horrible what happened to her right her mother has something called Munchausen by proxy. So Munchausen syndrome is you self-diagnose or you pretend to have illnesses that you do not have. Munchausen by proxy is doing that to your child or a loved one or whatever. So her mother convinced this little girl from, from birth and all the doctors is before digital records and stuff and hospitals and stuff that Gypsy Rose was really sick and really ill to the point where... She had her teeth pulled out. She had, <clears throat> um, I think she had um, a bunch of medical devices like inserted into her and uh, <clears throat> she was taking medicine that she didn't need. She was wearing, wearing prescription glasses that she didn't need. She was told that she couldn't walk and she was brainwashed into believing that she was like this unbelievably ill, sick girl, had her head shaved all the time and, and was told that, you know, her head was being shaved because her hair kept falling out and then it wouldn't grow back long enough for this little girl to kind of understand what was going on. And there was her whole life. Uh, anyway, she eventually <clears throat> kind of becomes famous a, a little bit for being like a really sick girl. Everyone feels sorry for her. The community raised money for them. They win charity things. They get a bunch of stuff from children's hospitals and charities and all this kind of stuff. And all the doctors know about poor, sick Gypsy Rose. Uh, and every time a doctor kind of starts to work out that maybe she's not as sick as the mother insists that she is, you know, looks through the medical records and kind of realizes, oh, hang on, this doesn't really add up. They would change doctors. And this was before medical records were kind of centralized and online. So doctors you know, you move from one hospital to another, they don't have the records so that you just show up with a kid who has cancer and this and this and that and the woman knows all the lingo. You as a doctor go, all right, that's where we're starting. <clears throat> Eventually, right, after being kept as a prisoner and an invalid and told she can't walk, she gets his boyfriend and uh, Gypsy Rose convinces the boyfriend to kill her mother and he does and they both go to prison for it. I think... Good on Gypsy Rose. Fuck yeah. Maybe she could have just left the house, you know, gotten in the boyfriend's car and driven away. But also that level of horrific sustained child abuse breaks your brain. From birth, remember. Yeah. What were you saying? He was more disabled than she was. Like mentally he was very disabled. And he got a much longer sentence than she did. Really? I'm actually on his side. That's interesting. So... So her mother manipulated and brainwashed her and she repeated the pattern on like a mentally impaired man and got him to kill her mom. Something that maybe she didn't have the nuts to do. That's very interesting. How long did he get? 
she got 10 years and he got 15 or 20. Yeah, right. That's very interesting. Uh, but anyway, now she's out of prison. And I was, when I first heard she got out, I thought, that's good. Good for her. I hope that she just lives uh, as normal a life as she could, right? Because it reminds me of this other girl who had a documentary about her and not a dramatized, but an actual documentary that went like, was super popular and super viral. You may have seen it. You may not have. It always gets talked about, but it was like this documentary about an evil girl <clears throat> where this family adopted a girl, like a little girl, and the girl started trying to kill the her brother, all right, the biological son, and would torture him and abuse him, basically because she'd been so traumatized. And all these doctors kind of studied her and determined that she was very, very evil. And then science evolved and they worked out. Actually, she was just very, very abused. And then and she ended up, this documentary ended up going super viral before the internet, really popular. Uh, but that girl is now a woman. She's changed her name. No one knows who she is. And she's got a normal job and lives a normal life or as normal as she can. And I thought that would be a beautiful thing for Gypsy Rose to do. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the first thing she did was just get a phone and go, hi guys. And she's an influencer now. I killed my mom. I killed my mom out of prison. I killed my mom and it was, and now I'm having a lot of fun. I'm at Starbucks. Isn't that really weird now that, that uh, murderers, where this is like the first time where murderers come out of prison and they're influences. That's fucking crazy. I don't think we've ever, we're, we're in a whole new era where someone can kill someone in a shocking way Someone makes a documentary about it. The prisoner becomes famous without even the prisoner's consent or anything. Not that you need consent to make a news piece or a documentary. And then the prisoner comes out and then not only are they an ex-murderer, but they're also famous online and expected to like influence now. And that's what's happened to this Gypsy Rose girl, like this victim of like one of the most horrific child abuse cases in the history of the world, really, if you think about it, she's come out after killing her mother and is just like vlogging. <laughs> I saw this, right? And she's so like, imagine one of the most abused people on earth and under socialized people ever just going to prison and then coming out and you, and they're on television <laughs> And they're, they're not media trained, let alone social trained at all. Like, how do you talk to a human, right? She's just doing breakfast television. Listen to this clip. This is my well, maybe my favorite clip of all time. You are my words that you are not alone in, in, in this, you know, situation. There are other ways out. Um, I did I did it the wrong way. Um, no, so, no, no, no. you know. Don't say that. I, I did. No I, choice, did I did really. something wrong and I, I paid my dues for oh, it. you mean that part? Yes, the part of it, oh, yeah. you know, that part of it. <laughs> yeah. Where are you no, going with this? Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> And that's just, that's the view. And that was just the host really, really forgetting that not everything needs a bit of female empowerment. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, not everything is like a girl boss move. You know? Like, uh, convincing a mentally impaired man to murder your mother in her sleep isn't very girl boss of you. You know? I went, I went around things the wrong way. Oh, don't say that. Uh, you're talking to an ex-con. <laughs> like she just got out of prison yesterday. You don't have to go, no, you know? She didn't get out of prison because the government overturned it and apologized. She served her full sentence. Justice was served. But now she's got out and uh, of course she has a boyfriend who, uh, if you have a look at him, is shaped exactly like her mother. Big fat bloke. Right? Big teddy bear dude. And, uh, and you know, she's not really well-versed in social dynamics or social media dynamics, and she's already talking about how good his dick is. <laughs> Which, 
after serving, you know, like your entire puberty in prison and a lot of your adult life, I could only imagine would be like if I just didn't eat for five years and then I found a cracker on the floor. I go, dude, this cracker's fire. Yeah. Is the D game fire or have you been in a woman's prison for your whole puberty? And the only other guy she's ever had sex yeah. with is a mentally disabled man. Who killed her mom. <laughs> Didn't kill a pussy, killed her mother. I, where is this going to go? Like, what, like she can't have a job ever. She could, she's going to write a book. She'll get a book deal. She's written one. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I guess she wrote it in prison, right? Yeah. What's, what's it called? Uh, um, that other book went really well. I'm glad my mum died. <laughs> what could this be called? I'm glad I got a retarded guy to kill my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy that. What's it called? How many? It's just called released or something like that. Oh, okay. You know, that's like uh, OJ Simpson's book, If I Did It. If I Did It, yeah. I'll find out what it's called. I just, I love, I love the state of the world that we're in right now. Jews are climbing out of tunnels. (laughs) Gypsy Rose is getting out of prison and fucking, she'll be doing TikTok dances in two days if she hasn't already. I just think that that's so awesome. The consequences of creating a a fucking killer drama, crime drama, is just crazy. Like, if the dudes who did Chernobyl were still alive right now, obviously they're fucking, they grew third heads and died very soon after, but if they were still alive right now, they'd be on TikTok doing the woe. The, um, <laughs> it's called Released Conversations on the Eve of Freedom. So it's not her book, it's just someone. someone oh, someone's written it. it. Yeah. So, so okay, so she's going to get a book deal. Um, I hope she starts daily vlogging. I think that would be good. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. She's doing get ready with me. <laughs> That's fucking fascinating. And this, and you know what? This is the this is the fall of America that you're watching. Uh, the fall of Western civilization that you're watching happen in real time. You know, murderers are getting out of prison, and instead of getting jobs like you know, I don't know, cleaning buildings, her outfit of the day. Outfit of the day. That's she, so good. She's vlogging. She is vlogging. And uh, can you read me some of the comments that people have left underneath uh, underneath her post? Uh, uh, bro <laughs> Bro came out of prison and won't stop eating everyone up. <laughs> <laughs> she has 8 million followers. What the fuck? Happy for her. Oh, if only Keelan that. was retarded, I could become famous in about 10 years. <laughs> no, I love my mother. Um, a lot of people just saying, baby, we don't support Zara and making it a Palestine thing. Oh, yeah. Hey, I know you killed your mother, but you can't shop at Zara. Bestie, can I get you on my podcast? She probably doesn't know what fucking Israel and Palestine is. She went into prison. How old was she when she went to prison? Like 16, 18? Yeah, something like that. All the, Most of the comments are actually about Zara. Boycott Zara. And oh then- my God. All right. She murdered her mother. She can wear what she likes. That's so funny that they are like on following a, a woman who literally killed someone <laughs> and sent a mentally disabled man to prison. And they're like, oh, yeah, but that's fine. But the real problem is the sweater that you're wearing. How are these? Who else thought she had Down syndrome at first? (laughs) (laughs) See, that's got to be very triggering for her to hear a stranger on the internet diagnose her with something. And this one. You know, she'll kill kill you for that. (laughs) I personally hate your outfit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. How oh, here we go. How Gypsy fell in love with Louisiana native Ryan Anderson in prison. Why does he look like Peter Griffin? Look at this bloke. Is that not is that not Peter Griffin? All right. Okay, I need a I need a how long is this? Okay, we can watch this. This is how they fell in love. How we met? Yeah. Hi, I'm Ryan Anderson, and I'm married Gypsy Rose Blanchard, now Anderson. Well, they're married. The record. I uh, met her by sending her a letter, and then we started emailing and conversing, and uh, about a year and a half after I met her, we got married. If you love our love story, you'll love Lifetime's new docuseries, Prison Brides, which follows women from around the world. No way! found their soulmates in American prisons. 
You won't want to miss the premiere Wednesday, <sighs> January 10th, only on Lifetime. Oh, my God. Okay. So she has a reality TV show. That's so fucking funny. So this dude... They met a. They met only about a year ago. So she would. He would have watched the. He would have watched the drama and go, well, that's that's a that's a ride or die woman. He watched the TV show. He would maybe he watched the TV show and was like, that's a woman who does what she's told, <laughs> within reason. Everyone, all the comments with him are like, oh, he's so respectful. He lets her speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She got out of prison, married Peter Griffin, and is, and is immediately an influencer. She killed her mom! She, well, she deserved it, but still, it's pretty crazy. Um, so funny. Uh, she couldn't find anyone cuter. That's, and, and she said, wow, you are very disrespectful for no reason get a life. That is uh, so crazy well this is weird sorry but i see him holding her back from a lot of potential hopefully what potential the only thing she's done is been abused for her entire life and then killed her mom like let her have a normal relationship holding her back from what she's going to become a fucking olympian mm. what's gypsy rose going to achieve other than wearing zara and getting told off for supporting a genocide she has no idea that it even existed only fans Okay, now we're talking, all right? Gypsy Rose. Hey, guys, welcome to my own events. <sighs> all right, I think we need to stop. <laughs> I feel like, similar to the Jews in the tunnels, every now and then we, uh, we uh, like Jews in the tunnels, mine a little bit too far and run the risk of getting in trouble. Um, okay. You know what's what's wild about me? A little update about me moving away from from Jews in tunnels and adolescent murderers. Um, I'm turning thirty uh, next week on the sixteenth. What is that? Two days from now. Is it? Well, when oh, from the release. Yeah, that's a, what day is it? That is a, a Tuesday. I'm turning thirty. Um, everyone is like, "What are you doing?" What do you want for your birthday? What are you going to do? I don't, I have no fucking clue. I'm feeling a lot of pressure to like do something or like be like, wow, a new step. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to change my Instagram bio because it says young smart ass destined for greatness. And right now, you know, as I'm in my 20s, I agree with the 100% of that bio. But a couple of days from now, when I hit 30, I'm going to have to change that young at least. Graying smart ass? <laughs> Destined for greatness? How about this? 30-year-old uh, smartness, 30-year-old smart ass, Destined for greyness. Because I am going gray. Well, I'm not going gray. I'm a silver fox. And there, then there, then there is a difference. All right, big difference. You know, what I think the difference between going gray and being a silver fox is like the real tangible difference. None of my pubes are gray. I'll, I'll let you know that if all of a sudden I look down at my nuts and I've got one gray hair, then I'm going gray. But for, for while I have silver hair. And you'll have to find out about it. <laughs> Colored nut hair. I'm a silver fox. Am I supposed to do something for my... I feel like everyone in my life is like, what are you doing? Like, surely you're... Yeah, I feel like you should be doing something. What do you do for your 30th? Don't you usually just have a, like a gathering with friends and family? I guess so. Even my mum's like, what are you, are, you, what are, you, are you coming over? What do you want? Like, mum was... I feel sorry for my mom. She's like, you're turning 30. What can I, what can I get? I want to get you some. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I like, you know what, you know what happened to me? I woke up from a coma and everyone's like, oh, now it's time to, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing next week, dude. I just, uh, I just, I'm still waking up going, wow, I'm yeah. awake. In your, in your perspective, last week you were 24. <laughs> That's actually fucking true. You know, I've been working on this video about the Dalai Lama protest, 
me and Killian had this whole conversation of like, oh, I need to edit the video. I need to have to film the whole thing. And Killian goes, what do you mean? We've made the whole video. It's sitting on a hard drive. I'm like, did we do that? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I am realizing every day that I do not remember the last two years. <laughs> it's very patchy. I do know one thing. It was very bad. <laughs> but now I'm waking up. Everyone's like, oh, well, you're 30. You've probably been thinking about this a lot. No. It's my, I, you know, someone, Jazz goes, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, she's like, uh, so what do you think about the big 30? I'm like, huh? I thought she was talking about like the cricket or something. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, you're turning 30 soon. I'm like, is it my birthday soon? It was like in two weeks. So I don't know. I've, I felt sorry for my mom. She's like, what do you want? I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know. Don't even know what I, what I want as a gift. I feel like my mom wants to give me something really special. I'm like, haven't even thought about it. So let me know in the comments. I've got about two days from this comes from when this comes out. What should I do for my 30th birthday? Hmm? Slightly unrelated. Mm -hmm. uh, my birthday a couple of years ago, you didn't get me anything. Mm -hmm. And then... I kind of made a joke. I was like, oh, you didn't, I got you a present. Yeah. You didn't get me anything. And you really confidently in front of everyone at the studio go, nah, man, I got you something. It's in the mail. And the months and months and months mm -hmm. went by. I end up talking to Jazz about it. I say, mm -hmm. he said he got me something. What did he get me? And she goes, oh, no, he didn't get you anything. He just lied about that to make you feel better. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he just walked out. <laughs> I did. You did? I did. did. You actually? I actually did. This okay. is from that time. No, you did. And then I completely forgot about it, okay? This is what I got. This is still in packaging. I've been f trying to figure out a reason to give this to you, all right? May I present to you, Keelan, your birthday present. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. Isn't that good? <laughs> See that now that my brain works, I can remember that I've organized things. Read it out. What what have I got you? These big nuts. What is it? It's a it's a book of a squirrel with big nuts. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. It's a picture book called These Big Nuts. This is right up your happy birthday, mate. What birthday was this for? Oh, uh, twenty two. Yeah, how old are you now? I'll be 24 in a couple of weeks. Well, you know, this is more of a 22-year-old's humor, <laughs> yeah. but hopefully you'll I've, find some... I've grown out of this. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you'll find some value in it. Oh, there you go, D's Big Nuts. That's been sitting in my house for two years, waiting to be remembered. <laughs> His sack was so big it would dra drag on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. Thank there you go. You can put that... You want to write a little happy birthday note in this later? Uh, yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, mate. Thanks for that. That's that's great. I'm glad we resolved that. Yeah, you're, you're very welcome. I did not forget to buy you a birthday present. I just forgot to give it to you for two years, every day <laughs> yeah, for two thank years. You, thank you. There you go. <laughs> so what are you getting me? Well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, it's going to have... Something I now. paid 10 grand for that, so <laughs> equal or greater value. Um, well, what do you want? If there was, I don't know! If there was something I could get you. Because uh, I got you a Scooby-Doo shirt a few years ago. Matching shorts, matching jeans. Um, fuck, I don't know. Here's the thing, like, Jazz was like, literally just before you got here, we were talking about it. She was like, oh, well, you know, you should give your parents some indication of like a special mm -hmm. thing. Because even she's like, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know. I, you know what I want? I don't want to turn 30. <laughs> I don't, not that, I don't, not that I'm worried about being old. I'm like, I don't want to have a birthday yet i feel like i'm not ready for it yeah i feel like i've just started and i don't want anything special or exciting i just am really really enjoying waking up and going wow i feel normal that's where i'm at i'm like i don't really want fucking even now like going to perth i feel like i don't know if i'm ready to go out there and start we were going to start touring around uh, April, but then this Perth opportunity came up and it was really good and I just said yes. And I'm really excited for it and I want to do it, but I'm like, fuck, I was really enjoying just kind of cruising and it feeling like nice and easy instead of the most difficult thing ever. Um, in a way, I feel like, man, I've got my, I got my present when I woke up from the fucking surgery and I could breathe. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You know, I was I was thinking in like like I was thinking, well, what would I get someone for their thirtieth? And it would be like, 
someone I really cared about, like a like a a, a son or a, or a a partner. You know, I would go, I watch, mm. or um, I did say to my dad, I got, I did get this one in. I was like, uh, I saw online um, like a really nice wooden box that holds journals. Cause I write every day and I, I kind of worked out, I write, I fill up about five notebooks a year, roughly of just daily writing. And uh, I saw the box and I thought that's cool, but it looks like really low build quality. Sent it to my dad, he loves building shit. And I said, hey, for my birthday, it's coming up. I would love something built by you to hold something very important to me that I could keep for my whole life. So that's it, that's cool. And it, but he won't finish it in time for my birthday, I guarantee you. And But he did say that, so I, I won't be disappointed. But yeah, I don't know. What do you do for your 30th? I guess you do have a very special dinner with your family and then like a fun thing with your friends. But I go to Perth on the 18th, so. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'll do something in Perth with strangers. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. We should go paintballing. I did go paintballing once and I loved it. School shooting simulator. It was fun. <sighs> Remember? Did you, well, you were there I with that. There, no, you weren't, you weren't invited. I actually I told you then. <laughs> I, oh, that's right. Yeah. See, I don't remember it, anything. If you, anything before like three months ago, I have very foggy memory of. <laughs> yeah. I, va- I have every, every, everything in my brain. I've got from birth to the end of 2019. And then there's just a gap. A, a, a gray bubble of events, <laughs> foggy, barely awake, ha- half experienced sensations and smells and things. Um, Great. It stopped recording. Oh, well, it's still recording here. Okay. Sorry if there were some audio issues. Um, stand, what's this stand up article? Yeah, I'll get it up for you. Oh, you have something for the show. Yeah, I sent it to you the other day. Oh, did you? And, and was you, I? And you said, yeah, this is great. Yeah, see, I remember everything. Since the surgery, I'm really good. Um, okay, well. Uh, let me find it. <laughs> Reporter fired for his stand-up comedy. Gets his job back after decision deems his joke was funny. Okay, excellent. Want me to send it to you again? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because oh, that's why I don't remember it because I was like, oh, this will be good. I don't want to read it. I just read the headline. I was like, this will be good for the show. Um, you've sent me another article. Gypsy Rose Blanchard says her boyfriend claimed he was a 500-year-old vampire. That the one who killed her mum for her? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, see, that's that's like, uh, that's like the, the perfect example of picking the right person for the right job. You know, if her boyfriend was like, oh, you know, I really enjoy uh, painting and watching TV and I go to the gym sometimes, you'd be like, you're not going to kill my mom. <laughs> but if your boyfriend is like, hey, I have something to tell you. I'm actually 500 years old. You'd be like, not only do I believe you, <laughs> <laughs> but I have a job that I think you'll do really good at. And if you do it well, I've got a little gold star for you and a vial of blood. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Here we go. What is this uh, this article here that uh, reporter fired for his stand up comedy gets his job back after decision deems his jokes funny? Jad Slayman's bosses at NPR member station Y terminated the reporter's five year tenure after seeing clips of his comedy online in which he explores his experience as an Arab American. See, that's I think that's so fucked that you can have. I don't know if this guy's a pro, but let's imagine he's not a hobby. And you can get fired for it because you shared it on social media. A Philadelphia radio station has been ordered to re ordered to rehire a reporter who was fired because of his side hustle as an edgy stand-up comic. Let's fucking go. Jad Slayman's bosses at NPR member station Y terminated the reporter's five-year tenure after seeing clips of his comedy online in which he explores his experiences as an Arab American. Through the SAG after after union. Slayman fired, uh, filed a grievance claiming he was fired without due process and a third-party arbitrator agreed, noting that his stand-up comedy was more than merely inflammatory. It was also funny. Slayman was reinstated with full back pay and is reportedly exploring potential legal action against the station. That's <laughs> fucking good. Do we have a clip of this man? I can 
trying to find one. Jad Slayman. Um, is that this guy? Okay, no. All right. That's, man, talk about fucking killing. You get you got a third-party administrative board to go, actually, no, he's, he's uh, legally funny. <laughs> That's really good. Good on him. Let's search Jad Slayman on TikTok. Surely we're going to find uh, something. This is a Hassan Arby clip reacting to it. Okay. Well, that's we're getting closer. Jad Slayman. Um, here we go. Stand-up comedians. In fact, they just oh, okay. Like- that's someone else fucking talking over. All right, dude. I hate the internet. All right. Give me this clip. No. Ow. But it goes for like fourteen minutes. Oh, 14 minutes. Okay, maybe. So when the war against ISIS started heating up in Iraq, I was actually uh, I was living in Afghanistan at the time. You could do that back in the day. They'd let anyone in. The whole vetting process of the Afghans was, are you sure about this? <laughs> There's other countries, dude. There's France. We do. Yeah, so it's just like good stand-up. It's like, you know, good beginner level stand-up comedy. Yeah. It's not hilarious. It's not super viral. It's just like a guy trying, ha- trying it out. Yeah, see, that's so that's so fucking dystopian that you can try something and get fired for it because the person your boss watched it something that you did outside of work hours i think that's like the the scary thing of social media is like everything is shared so you're just constantly monitored by unseen forces and that i keep hearing yiddish underneath my house see that's 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 got to be one of the greatest days in a lot of schizophrenic people's <laughs> lives where like a lot of like a few people were definitely hearing Yiddish underneath their house. A lot of people were definitely hallucinating Yiddish in their brains saw the news article and were like, I fucking told you I'm going to get the drill out. And I'm going to find these Jews. They're in my head. <laughs> oh man you know what I think that's it for the episode because if I keep going with these Jews in the tunnels things it'll be the last episode come and see me in Perth uh, by the time you listen to this I will be in Perth in just a couple of days the very first show is on the 19th of January and I am performing every single night except for Monday and Sunday get your tickets at lewspears.com then I'm doing Melbourne in April after that I'm going to Sydney and then Adelaide yes more dates will be announced soon including Brisbane including all the major cities I'm looking at the UK no promises but it's looking likely um, lewspears.com Grab your tickets now, and uh, when I talk to you next episode, I'll be 30. All right? So it's going to be a very different vibe, okay? Let me know what I should replace young with in my bio as well. Do I just take it out and it's just smart-ass destined for greatness? I feel like that's less cool than young. Smart-ass destined for braces? (laughs) Smart-ass who who burdened with braces. Mm -hmm. That's good. Smart-ass destined for grayness? (laughs) <laughs> uh, that's also good. You like that one? That was good. That's interesting because I said it earlier in the show and you didn't laugh. So it makes me feel like you just weren't listening for a lot of this. No, I was listening. I yeah. Just... Okay. You just thought it was funny again. <laughs> Smart ass destined for grayness. <laughs> still funny. Less so, but still there. Uh, all right. That's smart ass destined for greatness. <laughs> it's getting more funny. All right. We, <laughs> we're going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, join me on Patreon for uh, the rest of this episode. It's up right now. I'm Lewis Spears. I'll talk to you next Sunday, and I hope you have a shit one. Bye. <laughs>